Hickson substitution effect and we will also derive uh, what is the sign of Hickson substitution effect. Last time what we did was the Slutsky substitution effect. Now what we are going to do is the Hickson substitution effect. Let us look at it. So you have x2, you have x1, this is the original budget line and this is what my original indifference curve is and I am consuming x out here. Suppose price of good x1 has fallen, so when the price of good x1 has fallen, I consume x dash here right so when i say x x means x1 x2 x dash means x1 dash x2 dash okay in slutsky what is it that we have done in slutsky we have drawn a fictitious budget line which was passing through the original consumption bundle right in hicksian what is it that we are going to do Instead of drawing the fictitious budget line passing through the in, passing through the original consumption bundle, we will draw a fictitious budget line tangent to the original tangent to the original utility curve or tangent to the original indifference curve and parallel to the new budget line. Right? Parallel to the new budget line. So let us just draw that. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't look like. So just very minute eye for this. So I have drawn this curve which is tangent to the original indifference curve and I call this x double dash. I call this x double dash. So this blue line, note that this is not passing through x. It is tangent to the original indifference curve, but it is parallel to the new budget line. So the relative price ratio, the new relative price ratio is same. But uh, this guy is the initial budget line. It has the slope P1 by P2. This guy is the final budget line. This has the slope P1 dash by P2. This guy is the fictitious budget line, which has the same slope as which has the same slope as the final budget line, which is P1 dash by P2, right? Okay. So, let me just write a point. So, what do we do out here is, what do we do out here is, please write one line. The purchasing power purchasing power he has means consumer has under the fictitious budget line will no longer be sufficient right to purchase original consumption bundle what is this line telling you in slutsky what is it that we have said that even the fictitious budget line you can afford the original consumption bundle. Here what we are saying, it is not sufficient for you to afford the original consumption bundle, but you can afford a bundle that is indifferent to this bundle, to the original consumption bundle. So that's the difference. In Slutsky, this fictitious budget line, I mean the purchasing power of this fictitious, fictitious budget line was sufficient for you to afford the original consumption bundle. Now that's a different question whether you consume that bundle or not. No, I'm just talking about the affordability. 
here what we are saying is you may not be able to afford the original consumption bundle but a bundle indifferent to this bundle right so but it will be sufficient to purchase a bundle that is just indifferent that is just indifferent to his original bundle so x and x dash are indifferent x sorry x and x double dash are indifferent to each other right okay what do you do in hicksian you keep the utility constant how is it that you have kept the utility constant because uh, you're drawing the budget line which is tangent to the original indifference curve uh, in Slutsky, what do you what do you do? You keep the purchasing power constant. How? By drawing the fictitious budget line, which was passing through the original consumption bundle. Please write this point. The Hicksian substitution effect. keeps the original utility constant so i use this sign for constant rather than don't use any short forms in your paper right rather than keeping purchasing power constant right what does the slutsky substitution effect does slutsky substitution effect says that we will give you the enough income so that you can purchase the original consumption bundle so that you can afford the original consumption bundle right what does hicksian substitution effect says that uh, this is going to give the consumer just enough money so that he can get back to the original utility that's an idea to his old indifference curve please write the slutsky substitution effect gives the consumer just enough money to get back to his old level of consumption. But Hicksian substitution effect gives the consumer just enough money to get back.
to his old or original indifference curve. So, beta, this movement from x to x double dash is what Hicksian substitution effect. This movement from x double dash to x dash is what Hicksian income effect and x to x dash is just the total effect. Right? It's just the total effect. Now let us talk about the sign of Hicksian substitution effect. Right? So, so Hicksian substitution effect also, I mean as you've seen in case of the Slutsky substitution effect that is also non-negative. Uh, so, Hicks's substitution effect is also non-negative and that's what we're going to prove out here. Suppose x1, x2 be the bundle which you're going to demand at the prices p1, p2 be the bundle demanded at prices p1, p2, right? y1, y2 be the another bundle which is demanded at prices q1, q2. be the bundle demanded at prices q and q2. Now suppose there is this consumer who is indifferent between bundle x1, x2 and bundle y1, y2. Suppose that uh, Consumer is indifferent between x1, x2 and y1, y2. So, if I am choosing bundle x1, x2 at prices p1, p2, right, I am not choosing bundle uh, y1, y2 at prices p1, p2, why? Because the optimal bundle is x1, x2 at these prices. At these prices, if you're going to purchase some other bundle, then this other bundle is going to cost you more and that is the reason you have not chosen it on the, in the first place. So, x1, x2 is optimal at these prices, p1, p2. This is going to be the expenditure. This expenditure would be lesser or would have been equal if you're going to consume the another bundle y1, y2 at prices p1, p2. You with me? This is what the optimality says now that you will be choosing x1, x2 at prices p1, p2 and you are not choosing some other bundle y1, y2 because this would have been costing you more or since this is the bundle which you have chosen it means you have shown your preference of this bundle over these over this particular bundle at these prices. You with me? Similarly, if I am choosing y1, y2 at prices q1, q2, then the expenditure was this. And uh, if I have to choose x1, x2 uh, at prices q1, q2, then for from the reveal preference argument, this should be more than this. Why? Because at prices y1, y2, sorry, at prices q1, q2, y1, y2 is the optimal bundle. I should be, when I am purchasing y1, y2 at prices q1, q2, that expenditure would have been minimal or at least equal than any other bundle. Because if any other bundle at these prices was costing me less, then this could not have been the optimal bundle. Right? This is true. 
so what i can do i can uh, just write this like this this is uh, i can write like p1 x1 minus y1 plus p2 x2 minus y2 like this uh, here it is q1 y1 minus x1 plus q2 y2 minus x2 less than equal to 0 right so you can take up the minus sign out here and it will this will become x1 minus y1 so the inequality changes so when you when you just take the minus sign and then you add these two inequalities this inequality and this inequality then you will be getting this guy p1 minus q1 x1 minus y1 this you would be getting the beta so if you take the minus sign here it will become minus q1 x1 minus y1 plus and x1 minus y1 common you will be getting this p2 minus q2 x2 minus y2 and supposedly i mean we are going to make one assumption that uh, we are changing only the first price so if you are changing only the first price then p2 is equal to q2 it means the second price is uh, <coughs> is going to remain same suppose Suppose we are only changing the first price. That means what? Q2 is equal to P2. So this, this term will become equal to 0 because Q2 is equal to P2 and you will be left out with this. Have it up. So it means what? This is what the change in price. This is what the change in demand right i mean how should i write this this is what the change in demand so and when this is uh, less than equal to zero it means that the change in price and change in demand should be moving in the opposite direction right so this equation says that this equation this thing says that what that the change in demand must have the opposite sign from that of the price change right and how do I know this because this is less than equal to zero out here and how does it show substitution effect because you have assumed that consumer is indifferent between x1 and x2 so when you have assumed that consumer is indifferent between x1 and x2 it means that utility is being kept constant uh, so it means that this change in demand is when utility is being kept constant so when keeping utility constant you are finding out the change in demand you are actually finding out the hicksian substitution effect and what you have proved is that Hicksian substitution effect is non-positive. It is negative or non-positive. Right? So, this is what I wanted to do in this recording beta. Thank you.